Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Julia Scott and I am in light 535. This is my presentation for blog number three on student engagement. And I have connected the real world nonprofit called the Pulsera Project into this middle school art lesson, as well as the tech 2.0 tool called pixelart.com slash draw. And I'll be talking about both of those in this sample presentation. Okay. So to start off, the Pulsera Project is a nonprofit organization that connects nearly 200 artists um, in Central American countries with US schools, and they are um, working to support the artists, their communities, and other organizations that are focused on enacting social change in Central America. Um, these, Amer these Central American countries include Guatemala and Nicaragua, mostly, and the artists are mostly um, children from the ages of 14 and 18. Um, and they're making these beautifully designed intricate bracelets. And um, one of the weaving techniques they're using is a alpha weaving technique, which I'm able to teach to my middle school students. Um, and we'll be learning more about that in a second. Okay, so more about the Pulsera um, project, they use a fair trade model in order to support um, to support those Central American countries. So I want to define for you and for my students that fair trade is a term for an arrangement designed to help producers in developing countries achieve sustainable and equitable trade relationships. The fair trade movement combines the payment of higher prices to exporters with improved social and environmental standards um, for their communities at home. Um, the Pulsera Fund support um, a variety of organizations and programs, some of which include educational opportunities for the artists who are eligible to, um, to receive scholarships for higher education, um, housing programs to purchase land or materials to build, ho to, to build houses, um, excuse me, workers' rights or um, union organizations are supported by the Pulsera Project. Um, shelter support and even environmental partnerships to support progressive alternative energy programs in communities within Nicaragua and Guatemala and other surrounding countries that are considered um, mountainous communities. Um, those are even funded through the Pulsera funds. Okay, so other than talking about this nonprofit, I do want to bring in some art standards into this assignment. So, um, of course, we'll be talking about the elements and principles of design, um, one of which is repetition, talking about pattern or repeating an object or a symbol or an element of art. So color, line, shape, space, um, shape, form, texture, um, over and over again to make a work of art seem active or unified um, and talking about those principles of design there. Um, we'll also be talking about the model of alpha bracelets, which is the weaving technique my students will be using to create their products. And I'll talk more about those in a second, but this is a popular friendship bracelet um, technique that my students will definitely latch on to in middle school, um, not just for this project, but hopefully to create more things that um, spark their interest. Okay, so this is a breakdown of their assignment. My students will be asked to use first the web 2.0 tool pixelart.com slash draw to design their alpha product. So they're designing um, images on, a, um, on basically a graph using different colors. Um, and then after they've designed their patterns, they're going to use embroidery floss to weave and to knot their um to not their products okay once they've made as many of their products or um one or more that they want to they're going to promote their work by selling in a school-wide fundraiser so students are going to make a poster including the goals of pulsera their design so they're going to be making bracelets or products that are based on their own culture like if they want to make a star wars bracelet or minecraft bracelets or um bracelets based on their favorite foods or video games or movies or TV shows. Um, they're going to make those designs um, and then sell them to their peers. All of the funds that they raise from, um, 
from selling their products are going to be collected and then donated to the Pulsera project, which is another way that they raise money um, other than partnering with the artisans themselves. Okay, so now I'm going to shift over here. First, I'm going to show you bracelet.book.com, um, which shows you an example. Perfect which shows you an example bracelet um, pattern. It looks a lot like a knitting pattern, um, kind of like how you would see like knit, knit, pearl one. Um, in these boxes, it looks like the same, except it's just colors. So um, it shows you the dimensions, which is going to show you how many, um, how many knots across and how many rows down, how many different colored, um, how many different strings you need. So um, how many strings you need for the warp, and then how many colors of embroidery floss you'll need for your pattern. And students are pretty much going to be doing this on their own um, as they design their patterns. You can see here how you make the bracelets. So you'll have a warp thread, which is thread that goes up and down that you're kind of attaching to a clipboard or keeping stationary in some way. Um, a lot of times this is done on a loom in, um, in countries which are producing these like um, or, you know, anyone who's producing a, um, a weaving. But anyways, you have your warp thread that's connected to your loom or otherwise, and then you have your weft thread that goes from left to right that is knotted on each of the warps. You can see where this website shows you where to change colors, and then um, also how the threading is done behind the project. Okay, so this is just kind of an example of what I'd be showing my students how to do. Then we're going to come over here to the web 2.0 tool. So this is pixelart.com slash draw. As soon as you open a new file and that'll, it'll ask you to kind of do this once you open the website, but I'll show you how I got to here. So you'll click blank canvas, the width, which is how many knots across or how many of the warp threads that you'll want based on how many rows you'll want. So 84 rows, new drawing. Okay. And then you basically just have like a transparent background. Um, this project has, could also just be done on graph paper, which is why this is a create level number three for the technology integration. Um, but this website, pixelart.com, does offer a lot of cool features that I'm going to show you um, that my middle schoolers could use. So over here, this looks a lot like Photoshop, um, the way that it has different layers to make more complex designs. You can also click on the layers and adjust the brightness, contrast, and um, other adjustments like you can in Photoshop or Procreate or other design apps of the like. Um, down here, you have different color palettes um, that the app offers. Um, this is the default um, color app. You can also find your own co colors using a color scale, um, but we're just gonna use the simple one for this demonstration. Okay, over here to the tools. Um, the one that my students would probably mostly be using is the drawing tool. So they would find a reference photo of what they want to be drawing. So if they want to draw a banana pattern or they want to draw a stormtrooper pattern, they'd pull up a picture of a banana or a stormtrooper and they would just start drawing using pixels. So I'm making like a little heart here going box by box and I can make that pattern go as far as I want it to. Okay, so that's how my students would start to kind of use this tool. Um, if they have made a mistake, like I just have, you can use the eraser to erase over your drawing. There's also other fun um, painting techniques. There's this spray paint as well as this paintbrush tool that you can use to kind of create that um, more gestural line, which is really nice. So instead of having to individually put all of those tints and shades in there of this pink color, it just kind of does it automatically for you um, using that paintbrush tool. Okay, and then I've just hit Command Z too many times over there. So Command Z on a MacBook is how you would also delete in this app.
Okay. Um, your eyedropper tool, if I had had a, um, a color here, I can use the eyedropper to select the color and it'll pop back up into my recently used colors over here. I can include text so I can put my cursor down. Students can write their names. And then that can go on to their alpha designs. And then a feature that I really like, especially for middle school students, is this stamp tool where they can use pre-generated images um, and put them into their designs. And then it includes things that students will really latch on to, like holiday images. They have some Minecraft um, patterns. They have some... Um, what else am I thinking of? Oh, the Among Us video game that's in there. So there's lots of um, there's lots of pre-designed images for students to choose from as well, which is great for differentiating for those who can't go box by box. They don't have the attention span or um, the creative means to do that. Okay, so now I am just going in and finishing up this sample bracelet or bookmark using the stamp tool. Okay, all right. So then once students have obviously finished this stage, they'd find matching embroidery floss in the art room. They'd make their warp threads. They'd start to knot their wefts. Once they have completed as many bracelets that they um, they can manage as their little production team, they're going to um, make posters to sell their products in a school-wide fundraiser and then raise money for the Pulsera project, like I mentioned before. Um, I've included my create ratings to the right here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and can maybe use pixel art um, for your own class um, or can find a way to include bracelet making in, um, in your class as well.